What's up, guys? Pacey Gaming Podcast presented by Salesforce. You got Reed, myself. We're going to be talking about our 3v3 Switch group play against the Jazz. It was our last series, and this is game five. So just watch it. Just see a little, you know, scenarios where I can give you guys some tips on what I think uh, to help you guys on, on the 3v3 mode. But, uh, yeah, we're going to jump straight to it. And then got a green. I mean, just... Normal, you just went straight to PNR looking for threes. Uh, that's always a big thing in, th in 3 3. Just look for threes. Uh, that's a big part of our game plan. Uh, let's see. Good D. A little fluky. Yeah, that's a fluky. A little fluky still. We'll take it. We'll take it though. Um, yeah, normal defense. Played the drive, played the three. Got a little fluky still. Want to jump for the block. <clears throat> let's see the second possession. All right, pause it real quick. Um, just, to, just to mention it, obviously, um, the biggest thing that you guys got to understand from 3v3, from my point of view, is understanding the score of the game and play depending on the score of the game, right? So 0-0, zero, zero, everything stays the same. You play whatever you want to do. Um, it's 10-10. You want to play the same. But you got a four-point lead or you're do down four, uh, some things can change here and there, and uh, that's I think a big thing. I think a lot, a lot of the teams in the league they just play, they just play. You know, they're not really thinking about the score. They're not mathematically thinking. Okay, I need two threes. I need two drives. So just so you know, here we got a three. Then we got a quick stop. What happened on the next play? First thing we look for, quick slip. If you go back, <clears throat> we'll just immediately just comes out, doesn't even set the screen, just slips it immediately. Now he has a guard on him. And he don't even hit me on the corner. I'm wide open, um, but he don't hit me because it's an easy dunk and we're up 5-0. Now we got pressure on the other team. He hits me for the three. I miss it on a full bar or whatever. Now we're stunned, you know? So uh, that's a big part, you know? We got a little dunk there, but we're up 5-0. We're not worried about some twos. Yeah. Vandy's going to get us a three back. Vandy's nice on threes. He is. Uh, He's got it. So up 8-2. And now we got a six point lead, so everything changes a little bit. Big screen there. Just a switch with Wolf. No more inbound, nothing, nothing crazy. They're just doing single press of the course, set the screen towards the space. All right, so we're gonna finish. We'll go, we'll go back real quick. Um, I'm, pause it, pause it real quick. I'm not gonna. Um, know that i for sure cut without vandy telling me but me personally i do this a lot you just gotta read the game you go a little bit forward and then try to pause it when you see vandy go to the space so it's mm -hmm. the wing so we'll set the screen he goes right and pause it so right here <clears throat> i don't know if, if follow obviously follow probably just called the switch or whatever uh to just get on vandy but maybe in another scenario he's trying to hedge he's trying to fake hedge the corner's thinking Maybe I want to play up higher because Vandy's driven towards the wing where the corner is. So I cut even before Vandy gets close to me, you know. Like, I put pressure on that guy that's guarding Vandy right now, which is follow, to play the cut. If he does play the cut, it's a three. If he plays up high and the guy guarding me is sleeping, it's a wide open cut. So just constantly putting pressure on the team and not just sitting still. When you sit still, teams are going to get used to it. Okay, this guy's not even cutting. And then they put pressure, they double team, they do all this stuff. But if you're constantly moving, which is part of our offense, just constant movement, the other team got to be on their feet. They got to be on their cue. Uh, maybe they're focused a little bit more on you than the usual. And now your guy gets open better because there's no pressure. Nobody's pinching him. Nobody's putting pressure. Nobody's fake hedging. So just in, in case you guys understand, like in 3v3, uh, one of the biggest th things <clears throat> that made our team win the tournament and be eventual champions is our movement. Creating movement in 3-3s is underrated. Nobody does it. Everybody's sitting still and PNR works, and that's it. But if everybody's moving around, if you run PNR with the power forward, then the next position with the lock, and then you pop, and then you slip. The guy, when you when you pop, the corner cuts. When you slip, the corner wraps up. And it's constant movement creates a lot of pressure, and that's part of our offense. And Reed, if uh, uh, you got anything to add, you pretty much said it all. Man. I mean, this guy. You got it. Yeah? You said it all. All right, let's keep it moving then. Right. Nice, nice to the middle. Oh, mm. man. Dirty move. Full bar, though. Yeah. It hits, it hits so. Yeah, that's a big bar guard. Nothing crazy. Just 
they they just um <clears throat> switch I'm, I'm gonna just go back i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna also give you a little insight on, on just a little thing obviously i'm not a guard but you can pause it i'm not a guard but the main thing here i'm gonna use my little thingy because you know i want to use it i used to tell this to read in uh in Vandy, and they do it pretty well on 5v5 which is when teams are doing like a lot of rotations uh i tell i tell them like uh, you can beat them by passing it uh, and, and, and passing their rotation, you know, dotting their rotation. Or also understanding that the guy rotating is coming up from the PNR. And because he's coming up, he's not like set. You know, his feet are not set. He's coming up, turboing up because he got he to gotta guard you because somebody else rotating for, for the other players. So if you drag it one way and then you sprint back to the other way, it's so hard as the backside of the PNR to come up, sprint up turbo, and then stop your feet and then go to the other side when you're guarding at a 99 speed with 99.3. And that's exactly what happens. And if you go back a little bit, pause it. So Vanny right here, he's Wolf obviously is gonna set the screen so it's the middle because he's, he's reading the scenario with Vanny and, and the guard uh, guarding him. So Vanny's gonna come back to the middle. And this is my point. Obviously follow in the backside, right? He's trying to guard the PNR and he's probably gonna call a switch here. But he knows Splash is playing the left side of the body so he has to play the right. So in his mind, he overthinks it, right? He's like, oh, I got the right, I got the right. And then Vandy just uses the momentum, as you're gonna see as you press play, and it uses the momentum of him going right and goes back left, so. He's sliding. He's sliding. <laughs> he's sliding. You can't see him. Yeah, so uh, like I was saying, fellas, um, the main thing, like I said, uh, it's just a little tip, little, little sneaky tip, which is understanding that when people are rotating a lot and you're struggling because they switch a lot or whatever, understand that if you sprint towards the left or towards the screen and they're gonna switch it, then you keep it dragging it and then you fake and come back to the right. It's so hard as the backside of the screen to spring one way, come back and recover. That's exactly what happens. Follow the guard, it's playing the right side of the screen. So he overplays it. Vandy makes a quick move towards the left. And as you guys can see, this guy in La La Land, right? he, don't, he can't see it. Can't see it. He can't see he it. Where he's at like, this, 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 come on, bro. That's at least like, there's a lot of space there. Mm -hmm. It's at least one, two. That's three more follows before yeah. you get to the play defense. <laughs> See how, bro, you <laughs> It's fun. It's for the video, bro. Um, but yeah, that's just a quick tip, you know. And uh, Reed does that a lot in five fives, and you can just dragging it out and just faking it one way and using the momentum of the defender towards um, against them. I mean, that's a fake open. Yeah, I was there. I just played two. Obviously, they have bad spacing right there. Uh, Vandy, move quick. Oh, man, Vandy's. Oof. Oof. Yeah, we're going to skip. You know, we're not going to talk about that one. And we go break three. Yeah, go back. Let's see what happens on that break three. Let's see if my, it was my fault. All right, pause it. Pause it. Yeah, it's 100% my fault. Uh, if you pause it here, perfect. I got Rhea on the screen with me right here. And I guess I was thinking they love to hit Splashy because Splashy is obviously their main guard. And I overplayed the Splashy pass thinking they want to get hit him. But obviously this is not Vandy's fault. This is my fault 100%. Not only did I miss the shot, but I also didn't follow my guy. And if you obviously press play, you can go ahead and press play. If you press play, you're going to see my guy's the one gets the three. So I basically just messed up on both sides of the ball and gave up a three and then hit a three. So that's six point swing. Six point swift just by myself. So, you know, I'm not perfect. It happens. Great slip. slip. Again, is the score. We're up four, no need to rush or force a three. Boom, quick slip, up six. Back again with pressure. All right, I got, I got, I got something real quick. Go back. Let's see if you see what, what I'm seeing. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you work right here. Right here, what do you see right here? You saw anything? No. All right, so you go back. See my guy? I try to help him on defense, fellas. But right here, you're going to pause it when I tell you. Pause it. Easy here, right here. Main thing is understanding that follow is already in the paint, right? And look at where Rhea is. Got already a player in the paint being guarded. And then you got Rhea from the Jazz. I don't know what he's doing, but the spacing between these two guys is horrible. So immediately as a defender, Seeing things like this will make you a way better defender. Don't get me wrong, they obviously they still score, but it's the park, you know, that's the hard part about it. But if you guys understand what I'm seeing, as soon as this happened, immediately my head is thinking, okay, I cannot let him beat me to the right side of the court because this is the spacing right here, right? He can't drive because there's already somebody there and he can't go left because obviously I know Wolf is gonna shrink for me. 
So eventually, if you press play, you're gonna see, pause it. I get beat towards that side because I always play the right. If he does go towards the spacing side, which is the quote unquote good move to make, I'm there. I got a good bump, there's nothing. But if he goes over this size, exactly what I said was gonna happen. Even if he's looking for a three and look at how much space he creates between me and him, he can't get it. Cause Rhea was here, so Rhea messed up the spacing. So look at where Wolf is. Easy way for him to play two. He can just shade it, go back to the corner. And obviously the drive is eventually there cause the guy spaced out, but the initial drive wasn't there. So he wasn't looking for a drive, he was looking for a three. So again, like I said, we're up six and I know we gotta stop them from getting a three. So I just use the scenario of the play and understanding the spacing and the position of everybody to limit the three. And that's exactly what happens. And just that's just a uh, great IQ by me and understanding the spacing of the, wow. yes, it is, it is. Wow. Cause trust me, I think about stuff like this and uh, that will help you guys, especially locks. Cause that's the position I'm playing three three. If you understand where your help is, you understand where uh, uh, everybody's at at the core at all times. You know, you got a little peripheral. You're not focused fully on yourself. And also the score of the game, understanding they are looking for threes, that will make you way better defender. You know, you can see where the help is, push them to that side, communicate with your teammates. It will be way better. Right? Yep. I agree. That's but it. the self gas right there, crazy. But yeah, but that's just some love. I got to show myself love after I got binked on the other side mm -hmm. and like missed a three and like, you know. But yeah, we give it the two. Uh, we're up six. I wanna see what happens in this play though. This is a big play right here. This is just quick normal tip. Uh, again, we do this a lot. And uh, it's mainly because um, how fluky the game is on the turnovers. And like, fellas, like, you guys don't have to like, think, oh my God, like my point guard, I gotta give it to my point guard every single time. Because as a defender, you know that. So you put pressure so you can get a little fluky steal, bad animation by the game, whatever the case may be. It's nothing wrong with making the lock or the sec or whoever's not inbounding come down, you know, towards the space inside so he can be an outlet. You just gotta inbound the ball. You don't want a turnover. You know, Wolf hates me. I just be impatient. You're gonna see, I'm coming down. Wolf's gonna hit me. I'm super patient. I'm not gonna dribble. And then I hit my guy. I know he's dexing all the time. And as a defender, it's so hard, possibly, it. it's so hard as a defender. To even gotta try to go for that steal on the deck, even though the pass was kind of like quote unquote 50 50, he reaches. But as a defender on the park, if he goes for that steal and Vandy dashes to the other way, it's a wide open three at that point. Because now I'm sprinting to the corner, Vandy's coming to the court, and you can't intentional foul. So, like I said, if you wanna limit turnovers, that's the best advice I got for you guys. Don't put pressure on your PG to have to catch it. And he got people bumping him, people reaching everywhere, two people guarding the inbounder. Just make your other guy come down and be outlet, man. That's it. So go ahead. All right. A slip. I mean, that's just bad defense by, by Rhea. I mean, that's a slip. There was no pressure on the screen, and he, he just got open. Um, good ball by me. Okay, there's a lot more. Okay, we obviously going to talk about this play. Great mm. shot by Rhea. Go back. Pause it. All right, so they run a double screen, one to the right, one to the left. Um, main thing here, and I don't think I did this because uh, Vandy was on the right, but I am definitely already shading the right a little bit more. Um, Vandy is a PG with zero defense, and Wolf is a power forward with a lot of defense. So if anybody comes to set double screens, um, try to push him towards the side that has a defender that can play some defense. So right here, if you eventually uh, press play and then pause quickly when when he goes, pause. Obviously, Wolf's gonna take ball, I'm getting screen. And then <clears throat> Vandy here can obviously go and follow uh, Rhea. And then I, I'll, now I'm guarding the big, um, but we'll see what happens. Press play, try to play, pause quick, pause. So yeah, so basically um, Vandy shaded it, but he stayed with his guy, which is the big. So in the heat of the moment, I saw it and I just sprinted to the corner. Maybe we communicated. I don't exactly remember, but at the end of the day though, um, I'm not mad at him, you know. Um, I'm sprinting to the corner regardless with a lock. If I jump, I get a contest, which is exactly what happens. Obviously they get a three, he made a good shot. Um, but probably the best way to guard anything like this is just to zone it. Um, uh, so this is quote unquote a, not a mistake, but something we can look at and fix for the future. And we probably did uh, fix it already. Uh, but here, Randy just shaded it, went back to his guy, and I had to go from the screen to the corner, so it made it a little harder. Um, but yeah, that's just a little quick tip, you know. Again, double screen, push into the side where your defender is, and just switch it. 
Uh, in the park, you got to trust your power forward to switch and just play defense just like you, you know? That's like another lock. I told you we didn't score in the gathering. All right, let's see what happens. Because I think we win this game by a solid margin. Nothing to see there. I mean, they just blitz and they get over the dunk. We we'll took it. We're up three. Let's see what happens. I applied a little pressure. I go for the fluky. You got another steal coming soon. You remember? You finished two steals. You got one right now. Okay, they do the same thing again. We switch it. They probably gonna take the two. Yep. I mean that's fine. But again, we're limited to three at a high clip. You know, they can barely get any threes up. And when you know our offense is revolving around getting threes. They give us the two, we take it. I mean, at this point, you can pause it. At this point, you guys, like I said, this is the, the mindset of understanding the score and mathematically, you know, making sure like, if you go two by two, do we win? If you, do we need a three? Can we afford to go, uh, you know, score for score? So stuff like that. And then you, when you have a coach uh, like we have, it makes it way easier. You guys probably don't have that coach outside of the three players that are playing, but you need that coach in the game to understand like right here. Like I said, if we go two by two, we're gonna win the game. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. As you can see, the last two possessions is easy dunks, easy dunks. Eventually, they're gonna fold and try to play the dunk. Oh, I remember what happens here. Yeah, I stole it, but on the pass, yeah. So mm -hmm. go back. This is a uh, pause. It. This is the big, the biggest thing with with this deal. It looks super simple, but the biggest thing, and you love to say it on five fives. It's different than in fives, obviously, because it's a threes. But what are you saying fives when you're guarding somebody and he over dribbles and he, what are you saying? He's dead. He's dead. Can't shoot. Can't shoot, right? So on five fives, me and Reed play and he's guarding ball and I'm playing uh, behind him. He'll be like, Jones, like, why are you stepping there? He's dead, right? So like, he's telling me basically as a guard, he understand like the stamina bar, um, maybe counting the dribbles, counting the animations, the bumps. Uh, and he understands when you have that low stamina, I mean, you got to be a god to be grinning those releases because the shot release weighs way slower and the shot uh, making ability of the player goes down a lot. If you wide it, that is probably going off. So uh, this is the same scenario, but in the threes, in terms of like, I saw how Wolf was bumping Rhea. And at this point, there's no need for me to shrink, to bait, to do anything. At this point, I just got to guard my guy. And obviously, I went for the steal because I was trying to think, okay, he's super bumped, so... The only thing he can do is reset with splashy or reset with follow, but uh, he ended up resetting with splashy. But yeah, like like I said, like I guess you see, I, I didn't do anything special. I literally just hugged my guy, took a little step forward, and stole it. You know, because the guy is dead. There's no need for me to. Did I green that? There wow. we go. Open shot. But like I said, go back, go back. I was it. Uh, impossible. Uh, like I said, uh, they can't go two for two with us for the whole time. They can't because eventually they're gonna lose. So this is the the example of what I was mentioning, you know? You see, so here, over does, does it by a margin, right? But he basically trying to play the left side of Vandy's side. So if Vandy goes left, he blisses it. So at this point, obviously, who's gonna slip it? So take the two because we don't need a three, but the corner over plays it because they're trying to make a play. So everybody's trying to make a play at all times. So they give up the wide open three and uh, I missed the first one, so I know I gotta make this one, because if I don't, then, you know. You're selling. Uh, I'm selling, you know. So yeah, uh, again, the scenario, the score, eventually they was gonna give us a three, and that was the scenario. So the first thing is, coming on the court, uh, even before the play started, 14 to 20, right? We're up six, the game's to 21. I literally told Wolf, I was like, there's no need for us to fight through any screens. We're switching everything. We're making sure there's somebody in front of the, uh, there's a body in front of the player so we can contest the threes. We know they're going for threes. So if you start to fight through screens of six and it's a 20, and you're fighting through screens and you're the log and you're prideful, it can create a miscommunication. It can create, you bump to one way, the guy got to step up to the other side. Now it's wide open three. So no need to overdo it. And you're trying to limit threes, the best defense to limit threes without giving up a free two is the switch. So immediately, once we get to the scenario, I'll tell Wolf, yo, we're switching everything. At that point, we're denying the three by having somebody in front of uh, the guard. And also at the same time, we're denying the quote, quote unquote easy two, you know, the wide open slip because we're double teaming both. Because we don't want to give a wide open slip. You know, they get a wide open slip, they get a still wide open slip, now it's a two point game. So to my point, immediate switch, which is the first thing that happens. Be ready to pause it again, play. 
plays defense. All right, keep going. Pause. So it, I hear it. Uh, Splashy went up for the fader. And I, if Wolf jumps it, I think it's probably like a lightning. But I was thinking in my head, um, you know, guess past me or something like that, trying to get a three. So I reach, which is quote unquote bad. Uh, it's a little too aggressive by me. I should be underneath Rhea and just play for contest and just trust my teammate. Uh, that's one of my flaws sometimes is being overly aggressive. And right here, as you can see, I reach. And by reaching, my player is on an animation. Rhea goes back door, wide open board for them, you know. So that's on me because I can be down there before follow to get the stop. Obviously, off the board positive. Off the board, of the first initial board. So right here, you see, I jump for the board just in case it gave me like a long board. Immediately, there's nothing I can do in the paint. Like, he's underneath me, so I, I can't do anything. He's underneath me, right? So I just sprint back, make sure that we can deny the three. Obviously, he's going to relocate for the three. Uh, Vanny should be going over here to, to Splashy, who should be staying over here. There should be no threes. We should allow him to go straight over if he wants to. So um, ended up missing. They got a board again. And now that's, that's, that's a little troll on me. Yeah. But... So. Yeah, we'll see. I'll, 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 I'll tell you. I right, pause it. Boom. So, again, he's dexing me. I know he's dexing me, right? So, again, uh, I reach, and immediately after reaching, one of the things, and uh, our coach is probably our best at doing this, nobody in the game does it better than him, is reading a reach and shooting it. Because if somebody reaches and you shoot it, usually uh, it's like it's called a, a pocket shot, and it's a wide open shot. So I reach, and because I reach, I'm thinking, oh, he may see my reach and just try to shoot it immediately. So you can play it. I jump, and he gets open fade. Should I have jumped there? Probably not. 90% not. But I did because I reached, you know. But that, again, that's my flaw because I reached twice. So you guys learn from my mistakes, you know. In this scenario, probably don't reach, probably play for contest. And that's something that I 100% fix uh, heading into the tournament. That's perfect pause, low key. Um, pause it real quick. Uh, that's a hundred percent a fix that I did for the tournament, and uh, we play guys like Radiant that decks us a lot, plays off ball a lot, and uh, and and this is a good learning experience for us, you know. And we ended up winning the whole thing. We lost one game in the whole tournament, and throughout the whole tournament, I was playing super solid in every off ball decks. I'm not reaching. I'm playing for contest because I learned from my mistakes. So I learned from my mistakes, fellas. But here, before we pop, before we play, it's, it's literally a play. This is literally a play that we have, right? So up to, um, and we call this overload. So Vanny's gonna go to the same side of the court that I am. He should be, he should be like over here, low key. But it's fine that he's here. At the end of the day, the main thing is going to an overload where you got the guard, you got your lock, and you got the big setting the screen on the middle of the court towards the. The right side of the court. He can set it on the middle. He can set it over here, depending on where the guard is, obviously. But the guard is here. So Vanny's going to come all the way to this side, right? Sprint it. And he's, he can even follow it all the way to the corner. But he got all the way, this side of the court wide open because we're overloading it. Wolf is going to come up, set the screen, and then pop to the uh, wing. And while he's popping, you, you don't wait for him to, to go. You got to go at the same time. While he's popping, the corner is going to cut. So what this is gonna create is most likely this lock that's guarding, that's playing defense. He's thinking, he's playing defense. He's th he's playing defense straight up, right? So when Vanny goes to the right, he's thinking follow. He's thinking switch something, right? So it creates havoc because he's going towards the right side of the court. He's following our guard. So now Wolf is going to the pop, and if he don't react quickly, if he's not locked in, fully locked in, then Wolf's gonna be open for a sliver. So when Wolf's open for that little second, that's why the play works. Because if Wolf is open for that one second, this guy is going to see Wolf open and be like, oh, I got to step up a little bit. And when he steps up a little bit, I get a wide open cut. Or the only thing that can happen is I cut early because obviously I see Wolf. So like I say, it's like a, it's, while he's popping, you're cutting. So I cut early. He plays my cut. And again, if this guy is not locked in, Wolf is open and he's a wide open three. And it's the park, fellas. I mean, at this point, you take whatever's open. So that's our little play that we have. And uh, we're just going to uh, play it, try to pause it when the uh, pop, pause it. They get lost. 
this guy followed instead of uh, switching with uh, the power forward. The power forward was trying to hedge this side of the court because he's on the other side, like I explained, it was playing size. He's trying to hedge and now recover all the way back to the pop. This guy saw the pop open, came up just a little bit, and Lucas open, and that's game. So, you know, that's just uh, little things here and there that you guys can take uh, from us. Uh, but as you can see, we're not perfect. You know, I make mistakes here and there. And 3-3 is a very momentum-based uh, uh, game mode. I'm posting, yeah, posting on the... Very momentum-based game mode has a lot of stuff uh, going on. Flukies can happen at all times. You miss one white, and then they make a light lead. Now you're down five, six points. You never know. Like, it's a lot going on in three. So you got to stay composed, take it possession by possession. Um, uh, one of the main things that we did on the tournament was have game plans for team, stay composed, possession by possession, be a very hungry uh, team looking for threes, uh, understanding how big a three is in park and how easy it is to get it because it's 3v3 and the spacing is is uh astronomical 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 yeah. spacing and um that's just you know quick tips here and there uh in the boss core i mean you 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 want to you want to you want to talk the biggest things is we got no turnovers and they have two shout out to jomar yeah. for getting two steals creating turnovers but wolf kind of created one on his own with the bump and you played the pass lane so yeah. wolf with the assist there but yeah, I think the biggest thing is we've got four threes. They've only hit two, and then we didn't turn the ball over. So um, when you hit more threes in their team and have less turnovers, it's probably going to lead to a win for the most of the, most yeah, of the time. Um, I, I, I really said um, uh, when we play threes also, like like he mentioned, uh, the main keys is the turnover battle, right, uh, the three-pointer battle, and then uh, the offensive rebound battle, which is – Underrated, but we definitely usually win the O board uh, because I play with a log with has O board and we're constantly on the paint. You know, yeah. He hates it low key. He when he plays, he's like, you guys are just clogging it. Um, but but we do create a lot of second chance points that help us get those threes up. You know, uh, but as you can see, we won the three point battle, we won the turnover battle, and we lost the O board. But we won we won two out of three. And then this is just in terms of. Uh, our gameplay and our style of play, uh, but as you guys, you guys can see, we have seven assists, you know. Um, and uh, I mentioned it before, that's very, very important because when you play all the teams, you understand that they're doing PNR and the PG is either scoring or the PG is making the read towards the paint or the corner, right? There's, there's no in between. Um, we constantly make movement and make plays. Uh, Vanny has five assists in this game. I got one. We got one. Um, but there's some games Vandy can have like one assist, even no assist, and we've got three, and I got three. Like that's just how we play. We trust each other. We make plays, and uh, we move around a lot and touch pass a lot, you know, and trust our teammates. So um, in three v three, it's a lot of intangibles. But like I said, you want to be different, you know. I think that's the main key. You want to be different because if you're the same, then everybody gets adjusted to it, and everybody finds a way to stop it. And I think in the league and just in retail and, and in 3v3 just in general, a lot of teams just play the same, you know. Uh, they play size on the PNR and that's it. They just give up the two. Pick and pop every play or they just play with an inside. And it's, when you play with an inside, what happens? It's only a pick and roll. There's no other options. So it's super like, you know, the lock is always in the corner, just sitting still. No movement. So I'm constantly cutting, constantly wrapping up, moving around. Vanny trusts me. Sometimes I'm on the PNR with him. And um, Wolf is popping, Wolf is, is communicating what he's doing, slipping, off-balling. It's just a lot going on. So, um, like I said, that's just some tips here and there that I can give on 3v3. I hope you guys liked the video. Um, make sure you guys comment if you guys got any questions, you guys liked it. Uh, but just make sure you guys give us feedback on this. Um, we would love to do it again if you guys liked it. Uh, show some love to the Pace Gaming. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Read out. Jones out. See you. I mean, this guy. Yeah. He can talk to a big one. <laughs>